Kung Fu vampires in the building, man. What's happening, Kung Fu in the house? Hiya! Hiya! Okay, real quick, man. Introduce yourself and where you from, man. Kung Fu vampire, South Bay native. Yeah! By way of San Jose. I'm out in Santa Cruz, San Jose. Our studio's in Oakland. We are just, uh, we're here. We're from here and we love it. Yes, yes, that's what's up. Uh, what do you do and how long you been doing it for? Started making music. 20 years ago, 20 years. Uh, but I'm, I'm still young, I started young, yes. and actually started playing bass and drums bass. And, and different things like that in the live band at school, mm -hmm. junior high school, even elementary school was wow. playing in the band, mm -hmm. and then uh, that really wasn't fitting. Some friends of, I, uh, of mine in my neighborhood and I yeah. started a very innovative, like kind of electronica, hip-hop, alternative, yeah. psychedelic thing, wow. really cool super talented guys that I was uh, with then. Wow. And uh, it's kind of escalated because I was always into the dark, kind of darker horror. Yeah, you know, yeah, like horror movies. Horror <laughs> movie style music. And so it kind of has escalated and turned into that. Yeah. And uh, Kung Fu Vampire was basically established in the year 2000. Wow. And started doing shows in 2001. Yes, real quick, man. Uh, I'm a big fan of your shows. I actually uh, uh, seen a couple of your shows. And, uh, man, you bring, like, the band on stage. You, you got this whole dress up. Like, you really, like, dress up like a vampire. Like, I was really sh shocked when I saw you do that. What influenced you to, like, push a performance like that? And, um, and, 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 and how did you come up with a routine to do something like that, I guess? Uh, well, for me, like, a lot of what was going on in hip-hop was not really what I thought it should be. Right. I always thought it should have live instruments. I yeah. always thought it should have been darker, more unique, uh -huh. mixing electronic music and psychedelic stuff and just really horror style music. Yes. And so for me, that's been kind of the, the turn on yeah. from day one is, is uh, bringing something new to the table. And I've always worked towards that. There's wow. been some downfalls and mistakes made and, you know, wrong choices of band members, wrong choices of instrument styles and, and yes. different things. But ultimately, it's exactly where it needs to be now. And, yes. And the whole dress up and everything, it's all just part of putting more into what you do. Your craft. At the end of the day, it's all about honing your craft, putting out there what you want. And, you know, if someone was to really work on something, mm -hmm. you know, if they were really to work on something and you start saying, okay, the beats are tight, the band is tight, the show is tight, the album's tight, mm -hmm. the next thing is going to be, well, wardrobe and the way you look, you know. Yeah. That was never for Image. me. Yeah, it, yeah, it was just kind of more just what was felt right. It's not what I wanted to project as much as what felt right. You know right, what I mean? It right. always felt right. Mm -hmm. to, this is what I wanted to do. I just do what I want to do. That's yes. really what it is, you know? Yes. So uh, uh, real quick, what stuck to me, you just said a couple of seconds ago about mistakes. Now, what mistakes did you have to make to get to where you at? You know, uh, a good friend of mine a long time ago told me it's not called the music friends, it's called the music business. Oh, yes, And yes, uh, I was business. always a very, I'm not a very judgmental person. Yes. If you're my friend, you're my friend. Even if you have a lot of downfalls, I gave a lot of people who, like, you know, stole from me or disrespected wow. me or were drunks or just not into it, their head wasn't in the game, I gave them chances to rock with me anyways because they were my friends. And, yes. and that slowed me down, but yeah, I still learned from it. and. Yeah. You know, like, there's just been so many band members that there's there's been so many different scenarios, whether right. it was moving on to college, moving away, drug habits, different things. And now, today, I'm with people who are tight, who are serious, yes. who are with the program, yeah. who are cut from the same cloth that I am, who really Woo! want this, who want to work, yeah. who can drop what they're doing at the, at the you know with a week or two's notice and go hit the road on tour for two months. Right. You know, we wow. usually have a month or two's notice or even more. Yes. But I'm with people now who can do that, who are serious and who understand what Kung Fu Vampire is trying to do and what yeah. we're about. And uh, other mistakes I've made is just having too big of a band. Too big. I, yeah, I noticed I mean, last time you on the stage you had a, a whole every every instrument. Or yeah, a... I love it. It's what I want. <laughs> it's what I want to do. I wish yeah. all. I wish everybody I ever worked with yeah. that's been in my band from day one all in there could all come up on stage army. and rock with me. Yeah. But they all don't get along. They have different yeah. conflicting personalities. Some have drug problems. They have different styles of yeah. music that they're into. And uh, when the the smaller you get, the more easy it is to pick up. And hit the road you know what I mean yeah so 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 uh, between uh, business and pleasure is my question is that knowing that this is your friend and, and um, 
he's slowing you down. But yet, how would you break the news to him? Be like, yo, you know, like just serious up or or straighten up, or or you'd be or you'd be cut. Like, how do you deal with that? I've never actually really kicked too many people out of any bands. I've oh, never really? had that. They've oh. either weeded themselves out, oh, okay. um, it just naturally, naturally, or found some excuse. Oh, or okay. um, yeah, yeah. or the other band members of mine have said you need to kick them out or they kicked them out. Oh, okay. It sucks because there was a couple band members Politics. that I really liked. There was a couple, well, they just weren't cutting it. You know, they were messing up or not showing up. But there were some band members that I liked. Yeah. But other people said they wanted to kick them out, and, yeah. and ultimately their opinion mattered more. And, and as a collective, they wanted this person out, wow. so they were out. Now none of that stuff exists. It hasn't existed for years in my yeah. band. Like because you're actually tight. You, you we're found just tight. The last now. the last few band members we've had that left left on amazing terms, and actually they're at the front row of my last concert on Friday nice. with their hands up. So it's all that's all stuff from years ago. But like I said, there's just a lot of mistakes you have to learn stylistically, yes. having too many people on stage, yes. and when it came time to tour, mm -hmm. uh, everybody really showed their true colors. Right, know? right, so. right. And you learned from it and that's how you just developed this whole bit awesome team now. Yeah. That's what's up. So uh, what is the team name? Is there like a, a group name or just the Kung Fu Vampire Band or what is it? It's a good question. I mean, <laughs> it's Kung Fu Vampire and the band of the same name is kind of, you know, okay. it's Kung Fu Vampire is a band, is but I'm Kung Fu Vampire and Your whoever's in my Vampire band is, is part of Kung Fu Vampire. Uh, you know what I mean? It. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Pretty much have a lot of respect for everybody who's been in it, yeah. minus a couple tweakers that we had yeah. to kick out that didn't oh, act right. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, the band, it's it's kind of funny you ask that. There's actually way more people off stage involved with Kung Fu Vampire right. than on stage nowadays. Wow. Whereas before, there was more people on stage than off stage. But right. we literally have about eight people. Mm maybe 10 now that work with us that mm. they're a part of this they're a part of my band but they're not mm. actually on stage you oh, know okay. from the web designer from the, the from the webmaster team. to the to the um, manager to the management team to the tour mm. manager to the you know there's just so many things man yeah. so okay uh, 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 since you talk about touring um, top three places you toured Shoot, uh, in what respect? Uh, uh, just, uh, uh, just overall? That 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 was like, wow, I did it. Like this was like places we've been. Yeah, you've been that you would just. It was awesome for you. To okay, be. number one was the Playboy Mansion. Wow. Two thousand six, we played the Playboy Mansion with the full band. It was super tight. Wow. You know, um, number two, we played um, in Manhattan, downtown New York, at. Mm. Uh, what's the blues guy's name? Not JJ's Blues. That's in in San Jose. Um, um, I should know this, man. But there's a very big, famous blues place uh -huh. in downtown New York in Times Square yeah. that we got to rock. Wow. Um, I don't know. He's the famous blues artist. He's one, one of the biggest ones. And, and I, I should know the name. We played that place. And then another place would be um, Worcester, Massachusetts. We played a, a, wow. like a 3,300 person place. And then tied with that would be Denver. We played uh, the Fillmore in Denver, wow. which is like 4,000 people. I mean, for people who want to get like, who don't understand what that is, that's like a basketball stadium floor completely full and then people on the sides. That's how big wow. these places are. Amazing. So those were pretty much, you know, some of the hottest spots. There's other spots like Atlanta, Georgia was hot. Yeah. Um, my favorite place to play in general yeah. is Arizona and New Mexico. Wow. Beautiful place, beautiful people. Wow. Uh, almost 90% Native Americans there. Wow. And, and you don't see that out here. Yeah. Literally, eight, you know, 80 to 90% of them were Native Americans, and it was so cool to learn about their culture and, and be accepted by them. They, they love yeah. Kung Fu Vampire, and we love them. <laughs> yeah, okay, so uh, projects. I know that we got this one album right here. It's called um, uh, Kung Fu Vampire Dead Sexy. Is that the name of the album? This, this Dead album? Sexy, yeah. So this is new? It's out? This is out. It's uh -huh. been out since 2009. This re- um, Made, this is a revamped version that actually Revamp. is way bigger than the first version. We oh, pressed okay. up a thousand originally uh -huh. of the original version that was edited yeah. uh, for radio and was minus four of the, the hottest tracks on there. Right. And basically in 2010 of January, we got invited on a tour with this really famous and dope group called Twisted. No. Um, they're on Insane Clown Posse's label. They're a different okay. style than ICP, yeah. but they're on their label. They do the whole face paint thing and everything. Beautiful, wow. beautiful, beautiful stage show and, and set up and everything. These guys are amazing. Super wow. dope. Much love to the Juggalos and everybody for supporting what we do. That's that's their whole fan base. We can get into that wow. later. But anyways, <laughs> this came out in January 2010, yeah. which I pressed up just before hitting the road with them. Okay. And it includes four new songs. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we, we fixed it up to be a little tighter. Anything I didn't like on that first version, mm -hmm. we kind of brought it up to speed, 
you know, it made it what it needed to be and been riding off this one for the last couple of years.